So anytime I talk about breast cancer, I like to start with a little anatomy lesson. And if we cut the breast in half, we get an image that looks like that. On the right, we have those yellow, yellow fatty cells along the outside, and we have these pink grape-like structures on the inside. The grape-like structures are called the lobes or the lobules. That's the lumpy bumpiness you feel in a self-exam. It's also part of the breast that makes the milk. We then have the ducts that drain the lobules and bring the milk down towards the nipple. Now the reason that's important and why I like to start there is we use those terms lobular and ductal to describe where things are found within the breast. So I always like to start there. Now if we take one of those ducts, cut it in half and look at it under the microscope, we start with what's called a normal duct all the way on the left of the screen where we just have one layer of uniform cells around the outside of the duct. Over time, part of our normal hormonal cycles as women, those cells can start to become overgrown or hyperplastic, that hyperplasia word, fancy word for more than one cell layer. But these cells can become atypical. And when these atypical cells fill a duct, we get what's called a ductal carcinoma in situ. This is a cancer that starts in the duct and remains inside the duct. We call this DCIS for short, or a non-invasive breast cancer because it's still within that duct. Now when it breaks outside of the duct, that is when it becomes invasive. So the types of breast cancer, ductal carcinoma in situ as mentioned, invasive ductal carcinoma, so cancer starting in the duct now outside of the duct, and invasive lobular carcinoma, so starting in the lobule now outside of the lobule. Now I'm sure you're gonna say, well, where's lobular carcinoma? in this, collagen carcinoma in situ. Well, even though lobular carcinoma in situ has the word cancer in it, it is not a cancer. Mm -hmm. Lobular carcinoma is actually a high risk lesion that we can find on biopsy, and it does increase a woman's risk of breast cancer, but it is not a cancer. So why do we keep cancer in the word? To really stress out our patients. I mean, there's no reason for it. We've yeah. gone back and forth with the pathologists. Actually, in the UK, they've stopped using that, but it's a whole different grading system. And the, the pathologists in the state said, we're just gonna call it lobular carcinoma in situ, and here we are. And now, when we have a positive biopsy for breast cancer, the pathologists will process it and look for three different markers. We look for estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and a protein called HER2 nu. So the estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors, those are like little antenna on the breast cancer cell that allow the breast cancer to be fed by the hormones, estrogen and progesterone. HER2, that's a normal protein in the body, but some breast cancers have more of that protein than they should. And we look for these three markers because it helps us guide the treatment that the patients receive. We can have all of these markers positive, all of these markers negative, or a combination in between. But again, it's gonna help guide the treatment. So stage of breast cancer is anywhere from stage zero to stage four. Stage zero being that ductal carcinoma in situ because it's still contained within the duct. Stage four meaning it's spread to the other parts of the body. And it's generally determined by tumor size, whether or not lymph nodes are involved and whether or not it's spread throughout the rest of the body. And I actually, before we jump to the next slide, because I'm missing one in here, I also mention lymph nodes. So lymph nodes, normal part of the immune system, we have hundreds throughout the body. The ones we're most concerned about in the setting of breast cancer are the ones under the arm. And the reason for this, the first place breast cancer goes when it leaves the breast to the lymph nodes under the arm.